Could you survive the lightning strike in Back to the Future or being swallowed by a giant bug in Men in Black? Well, in the new YouTube original series, Could You Survive the Movies? Host Jake Roper explores those very questions. And he joins me right now. Hey, Jake. What up, Jeff? So in your new YouTube original series, this combines your two passions, science and cinema. That is exactly right. That is the, the point of the show is to hopefully celebrate films that we know and love, but also imbue them with this sense of wonder and curiosity. And by the end of it, you've hopefully learned something. Now, Jake, you have over a hundred years of movies to choose from. How do you choose which films to feature in your series? Uh, a lot of it is me just, what movies do I really like? What movies do I selfishly want to be a part of in my own way? And then from that, like every film, really anything, there is so much interesting science or information behind. So there's no shortage of that. It's just, what do I want to talk about? And what kind of car is this? Oh, this old thing? Well, this is a 1981 DeLorean that my friend and kooky inventor Doc turned into a time machine and then I accidentally drove it back to 1955 and now I'm stuck here because the power source is plutonium and I don't have that. Hmm. Sounds like an interesting idea for a moving picture, man. You know, I think I'm gonna call my cousin Bob. Bob Zemeckis and tell him about this because we can make a moving picture about the future. Uh, the car and its flies. Okay, that, that was my bad. So, you know what, let's just go over the basic principles, the basic rules of time travel and also maybe find someone who knows where Doc is. Hello. Uh, does anyone know where Doc lives? Of course, 1640 Riverside Drive. Yes! Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so back to the basics of time travel. Let's imagine time as we normally think of it, as a straight line. But there are a few other ways to think about time and traveling through it. The first is that you have three timelines, past, present, and future. If you're able to travel through time, that means the past and future exist concurrently with the present. All of time is happening at the same time. So when you travel from the present to the past, you are leaving your timeline and going to another one. The same if you were to jump to the future. The second theory involves a wormhole, or Einstein-Rosen bridge. The basic idea being that a wormhole could act as a shortcut, connecting two different points in space-time. Even though wormholes have not been proven to exist, this concept fits within Einstein's general theory of relativity, whereas the other two do not. And quick side note, in regards to relativity, we can actually travel through time, kind of. If an astronaut on the International Space Station had an atomic clock with them, they'd notice that when coming back home, their clock would have ticked off less time than those on Earth. Because time is relative. The elapsed time between events depends on the motion of the observer. And you can actually experience this right now. One of my favorites is Doc Brown from Back to the Future. You recreate my experiment with a lightning strike to the clock tower. That was bad, huh? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, Doc Brown's clock tower. So that is uh, Back to the Future is the first episode, which is out right now. And that one was actually fantastic. We got to go onto the Universal lot and film it where they filmed the movie in, like, from 1955. We had the same exact clock tower, the same area. And that one was really fun because I've always been curious. When Doc Brown connects those wires together, well, why wouldn't the electricity just go into him? Because electricity is always looking for the closest or the easiest way to get into the ground. And it turns out that that is what would happen. The electricity would just travel into his body and not even go to the DeLorean at all, which then begs the question, well, then what would have happened to Doc Brown if that much electricity went into his body? So we had a giant machine that generates a ball of electricity and we tested it. And you do more from Back to the Future. You do Marty McFly testing out his giant amp when he hits that guitar and gets shocked across the room. <laughs> yep, we did that one. We had the, uh, the giant guitar amp. And that one... Uh, which might not be super surprising, but that would be really, really bad for you. Marty, like the movie would have ended within the first three minutes. That would be the end of the film. Just Marty on the floor. <laughs> and you also figure out if you're eaten by a giant bug like Men in Black, how do you stage something like that? Well, we genetically created a giant bug. No, uh, we, uh, it's just kind of the idea of, okay, if you were eaten by something that large, what would happen to you? And then it allows us to talk about two different varieties of digestion. One is human digestion, how we generally think of it with stomach acid, and the other is how insects digest, which is more of a grinding motion. So we're able to demonstrate what both of those would look like if you were eaten. Now you're doing real life experiments here from movies, so safety's gotta be an issue. Take me through the procedure and making sure that you're okay. 
Yeah, so a good example of that one would be for Men in Black. We did a practical stunt, and then we did the actual demonstration stunt. And the practical stunt was a pull stunt, where I have a harness on me, and there's a basically a giant pressure canister that fires, and I whip back about 20 feet and fly into some pads. That, we had a lot of safety precautions there. We had, you know, medics and stunt guys that were t teaching me how to do it. That was fun. I was a little bruised. But then when we do the actual one that will probably be devastating, that is we're all hidden behind usually plexiglass or a car, and we're watching a monitor, and we see what's actually happening without being injured, because that is not good. Now, when recreating scenes from movies and all those experiments, is there any kind of copyright issue here? Do you have to get permission from the studios? Uh, generally, we don't really, we would always reach out to the movie studios just to see if they wanted to be involved. So with Back to the Future, they were very nice enough to, to be excited by it because it's the, or the start of the 35th anniversary for Back to the Future, actually today. Uh, so they were very eager to help us with that. But most studios were just happy that it was happening and they were like, as long as you don't use our music, then we don't really care. So we didn't use their music. Now, while watching your show, it's fun, it's educational, and that's intentional because this is part of the YouTube original educational series. Yeah, so it's a YouTube original learning series. And like I said the, the hope with the content that I create, and especially with this show, is that the movie is there to kind of hook you, get you in, and then you, by the end, will accidentally learn. You go, wait, did I just learn about how electricity travels through a body or how the muscle structure of an animal is different than our own. Like that's kind of the, the goal is that you learn something and are really excited by it and just want to keep learning. And Jake, you're no stranger to YouTube. Tell me about your channel and all your success. Well, my channel is just Vsauce3 and our goal at Vsauce is to ask interesting questions and give interesting answers and do it in a way that isn't so straightforward. Maybe it takes us a long time to talk about why animals don't have wheels. Why do they have legs? Well, let's find out. And it's all about that kind of intrinsic curiosity that we all have and really tapping into that and exploring it further. Now, for all my viewers, Jake, tell us when they can catch your show on YouTube. Oh, thanks. Well, it airs uh, starting on, uh, well, the 21st, so it's already out for you. Uh, and there'll be an episode every Monday at youtube.com slash vsauce3 or slash learning. And uh, once a week, Monday, free to watch. Now, I'm a YouTuber too, Jake, you know, Vegas film critic. I've been on there for since the very beginning of YouTube, and they always say we have to collaborate. Can me and you collaborate sometime? Yeah, let's do it. You'll be in season two. I am so down for season two. I'm going to keep you to your word on this. And in the meantime, come visit us in Las Vegas. We'd love to have you. Definitely, man. I will. Thanks so much, Jake, and good luck. Thank you so much. The YouTube original series, Could You Survive the Movies, is now streaming on YouTube, of all places. And for more reviews and interviews, just surf on over to my website at VegasFilmCritic.com. I'm Jeffrey K. Howard in Las Vegas. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.